Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I just want to do a uh, uh, kind of a, a re recording of a video I've done in the past, and it's talking about one specific model that Invicta makes. And I have uh, three different watches that are that tie into this. And the watch I want to talk about today is, again, one that I reviewed in the past, but now that I got the better lighting and the better camera equipment, I want to come back and re review this watch for you guys. And this one here is a watch that I always get a lot of questions about. Always get a lot of comments on. And this one here is the Invicta. They call it the Venom Hybrid. Just a chunk of a watch. Uh, when it first came out, I knew I had to have it, but the price was so steep on it. And then I, you know, I picked it up when the price dropped. I got this for around 300 bucks, uh, which is kind of my comfort area with Invicta watches. Um, it's hard to spend more, although there has been a couple occasions I have spent more. Uh, but really, like my... I really like to keep it under $300. Um, I think they provide an exceptional value, and uh, I love their product. And you guys know I, you guys know I love their product because I'm constantly talking about it. So I won't go too much off on a tangent because, you know, I kind of start to veer off when I start to talk about Invicta watch quality and uh, the knuckleheads out there. And what I'm going to be doing, just want you guys to know, I'm going to be doing weekly uploads or every, every week or every two weeks of the few, I do get a few, negative comments from the internet trolls out there. Uh, just to respond, let you guys know, because I never post negative stuff on the channel, but it doesn't mean I don't want to share it with you guys and let you guys know about some of the morons out there. And I think my Invicta lovers, it's really for the Invicta lovers, uh, or people who have a brain, <laughs> uh, I think you guys will really like it. So anyway, um, let me just not keep going with that. Let me move on here. Okay, so... Uh, again, the Invicta Venom Hybrid, and what they've done is they've basically combined several elements from several different watches into this hybrid version. Now, um, again, I've talked about this in the past, but I just want to share with you guys, I have two of the watches that are part of this watch here. And the one watch I don't have is one that I used to have. It's the Venom Generation 2, uh, which is the bezel element of this watch. And I don't have that anymore because I sold it. Um, and now it's something that you know a lot of people are really looking for. I get a lot of comments on, man, how do you get that? Where do you get that? And you know, it's probably something that they're probably, who knows that they're going to make again. That's what Invicta does. They'll come out with a watch, come out with something new, they start making that, and it's hard to find ones um, that maybe they produced a year or so ago. So I always say, if you like it and the price is right, jump on it. Um, anytime you get an Invicta Reserve watch, just, you know, and this is going to be over generalizing a little bit here, but anytime you get an Invicta Reserve watch, under $300, that's a really good value. And, you know, again, people always talk about, oh, well, why is there such a big MSRP? I don't like to do that. Everybody does that, guys. Every, for, not, sorry, not everybody, but a lot of watch companies, a lot of products do that. There's an MSRP, it's what, it's, it should be nothing new to you folks. I mean, every car out there has an MSRP, an invoice price, and what they sell it for. So it's no different. But I wish I could have showed you that because what they've done is they've taken the bezel from the Venom 2, which I think is the best looking bezel that Invicta makes. I wish they would do this element on a hybrid uh, um, Grand Octane. I think it would be awesome. Um, it's just a very, very chiseled, aggressive style bezel. I love this bezel. It is so cool looking. Um, and that's the only part of this watch that's the Venom. And that's why I, I have the other watches, which I think provide more design elements. And I don't really know why they call this the Venom 2, because this watch should really be called a, a, a Sub-Aqua Specialty Hybrid. And I have one right here. Because really the only thing that makes this watch related to the Venom is just that bezel. Most of the watch is a specialty. And they share the exact same case. I'll turn it this way here so you can see. They share the same case, they share the same band, exactly the same band. The cutouts, the case and cradle design, the side markings, everything is exactly the same. And naturally, these are both gold, so that's you know even you know solidifies uh, that you can really see that there is no difference between the case and of course the. Now again, there's a variation of the face, the movement. That's always going to be a difference with Invicta watches, but they really should have called this the Invicta Subaqua Specialty Hybrid because that's really what it is. Most of the watch is your specialty, with the exception of your bezel, which I just showed you, which is off the Venom uh, Generation 2. And then one of the greatest elements on this watch, and I love this element, and they have done this on several other hybrid versions, is the crown and pusher system off the Subaqua Noma 5. This is an award-winning design. You have a butterfly tab that folds out, uh, screw-down crown, of course, and when you turn these 
pushers, the pusher actually extends and retracts into the case. Um, an amazing award-winning design, very, very innovative, and very. it adds a lot of unique detail to this watch. And here is a Subaqua Noma 5 that I have right next to it here. As you can see, same system on both. And the no, I mean, the the Noma 5 is one of my favorite watches. I mean, yeah, I know you guys are always like, yeah, yeah, they're all your favorite, and they are. But um, this is an exceptional timepiece as well. It really, really is beautiful. And I have this one in the stainless steel, and I had to get it in gold. The only thing I wish is that because I don't have one, I wish it had a uh, like a, a brandy wine or a red face. This would be a beautiful combination. It's very, very hard, in my opinion, to find watches that are gold with a red face. I found a few, but um, that would have been a beautiful combination. But uh, so back to the watch without showing you too much of the other watches there. Um, huge, chunky watch, 52 millimeters in case diameter. I believe you're pushing about 23 millimeters in case thickness. This thing stands up on the wrist. And it weighs, you know, about a pound. Most of these reserve timepieces in this large, chunky design weigh about, you know, 14 ounces to about 17 ounces, depending on how many links you got to take out of the band. Um, I have a 7-inch wrist, so I have to take quite a bit of links out. Um, but if you're a bigger guy, you know, they definitely, uh, it'll, I think it'll take up to about a 9-inch wrist. And if you guys have never seen this one and don't have this in your collection, you got to pick this bad boy up. Um, I absolutely love this watch. And the only thing about it, you know, which kind of sucks a little bit, I guess, is just the fact that it is very, very similar to my specialty. Uh, but, um, you know, I, the specialty has your rose tone right there on the bezel, which is something you guys know I absolutely love, the two-tone rose. Um, and, again, this is what it looks like on my 7-inch wrist. I weigh about 165, 170 pounds, about five foot seven and a half. So this is a tank of a watch. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, it's, it is very, very similar to the, the uh, Subaqua Specialty. So the only thing about it is I wish that, uh, you know, I bought this one first, then I ended up buying this one. And I just wish that maybe this would, would have been a different color uh, just for the uniqueness factor. Um, you can see they're very, very similar design, but still different watches. You know, you still get that rose tone and a lot more gold. Whereas this one here has the master calendar uh, movement, which is one of my favorite movements made. And of course, um, your navy blue face. Now they did have this one with a gold face that I really liked as well, uh, but unfortunately it was quite a bit more and this was the one that was on special, so I opted to get this one here. Just a tank of a watch. I think I'm going to wear this one today. This thing is just a beast. I'll try to get back a little bit so you can see what it looks like from a distance. You see it really stands up on the wrist. I mean, you go comparing it to something of in the standard size. I'll just go ahead and throw my Aqua Dive on here, which is, you know, a, a different watch for a different occasion. You see, it just, it just really dwarfs other watches. But, you know, that's the thing. There's different times to wear different watches. And, and, and uh, you know, I like them both, I mean, really. But, but this is just, it, Invicta watches make huge, huge timepieces. All right, folks, well, that's about it with the Invicta Venom Hybrid. Uh, again, uh, that is the technical name for the watch. Um, it's so weird. You know, I'm so used to wearing a watch on my on my left wrist that this is not a heavy watch, but I threw this on my right wrist, and it feels really heavy. It's really weird. Strange. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I hope you guys liked the review. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. Click like. If you have any questions about this watch, don't hesitate to drop a comment. Um, Guys, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're new to the watch thing and you haven't owned an Invicta watch and people are going to tell you different things. And I gotta, I'm just going to close on this. People are going to tell you different things. Um, I can, can guarantee you I have a lot of watches in my collection, probably a lot more than most people. I have about 115, 120 watches. I have watches by Diesel, Addy K, Seiko, naturally Invicta, Aragon, Aquadive, Visser, uh, Sterling. And I have to tell you that the quality that you get with an Invicta watch is it is the best value with the exception of Aragon out there. Those two companies give you more for your money if you're a smart shopper, you know, all right? But, you know, I've compared these watches to a lot of micro brand. I don't have super high end timepieces, you know, but, you know, some of my micro brand models like this, this is, you know, this is $1,900, you know, uh, made in Germany. I mean, 
Um, it's a beautiful timepiece, but when I compare it to a lot of the watches that I have that are anywhere from 1500 to 1900, you know, all these watches are of nice quality, you know, and no matter what you buy, if as long as you like the way it looks, you know, there's not a lot of garbage out there. And people will come on and say, oh, well, this brand, Invicta sucks. Invicta gets a lot of slack or they get a lot of negative comments from people. And of all the watches I review, Invicta gets a lot of hate from really the watch snobs. It's so funny that when I when I get some of these comments and I was like, okay, well, let's take a look at your videos and, you know, do a little snooping. It's so funny. One guy mentioned the other day about the Invicta watches and he said, he said they're garbage, this and that. And he's, and I'll, I'm going to call him out next week when I do another review. But, like, you look at his carpet. And this is coming from a guy with this dirty, stained carpet in his living room. Trash all over the floor. It's like, dude, you don't have anything. Like, th this guy wouldn't know a good quality watch. If, if, if you know, if, I mean, it's insane that these people actually think they know what they're talking about. Yeah, is Invicta the best quality watch you can get out there? Probably not, you know. But... What do they all do? They all tell time. And I can tell you that in over five years, I've had no issues with any of my Invicta watches or any of my watches for that matter. I have watches that are date back over a hundred years and they still all work. Some don't have batteries that work anymore, but nonetheless, you know, some of the wind up ones, the automatic, they still work. So guys, you can get good and bad with any, any qual, any watch brand, but I can tell you if you have $300 to spend, okay. And whether or not you you like the bit maybe this isn't your type of watch you know maybe this is too big for you and that's okay but if you have three hundred dollars to spend and you take that money into the into your mall and go to some of those stores and try to find a watch three hundred dollars you will get nothing even close to the quality that you're going to get with a victim that's a fact that's a fact so uh, just kind of think about that, you know, Invicta makes a lot of different models, Aragon makes a lot of different models, um, there are lots of nice watches out there, and I tell you, but for bang for the buck, for uniqueness and styling, you really can't get rolling Invicta. So, Alright guys, well thank you very much for watching, again remember, click like, subscribe, and if you want to make a purchase, I'll put links in the description for this stuff, um, as always, have a wonderful day folks, take care.